How to think like a strategic warrior. Now, ever since a kid, I always used to dream about being a type of warrior or special forces type guy. And after growing up on people such as Action Man and Max Steel, I'd say one of my biggest regrets in life throughout all the mistakes I've made, and trust me, I've made a lot of mistakes, is not joining the army or any type of military service when I left school at 16, whether that was the Royal Army, the Royal Navy, or the Royal Air Force. I mean, I've always felt that army and military personnel always have this sense of being distinguished and embedding a strong element of hardcore discipline and mental toughness. Two key attributes that are essential on a journey to becoming a successful entrepreneur. And it's very common to see the parallels between war and business. That's why, especially in my character breakdown videos, I always try to focus on elements of power and war as much as I possibly can. Reason being is because besides actual physical warfare between two armies, I feel that entrepreneurship is the next closest thing to war itself. Now, even though this is an entrepreneurship channel, I don't like to focus on the typical stuff that you can find anywhere on YouTube. What I actually like to do is get really deep and tell you the truth about it all. And the reality is, entrepreneurship can be a very nasty business. You are literally taking a concept and idea to this massive marketplace and literally competing with thousands and thousands of other businesses. And as you are competing for customers and clients, it's highly likely that you will bump heads with other people and start to form your own enemies. It's literally like you and your army on one side and your enemies and their armies on the other. And we're all trying to fight for this control of the marketplace. Ever since the birth of the internet, our world that we live in right now has become increasingly competitive. And this doesn't even include the battles and wars you face on your own side. People who smile in your face and pretend to be on your side, when in reality, they actually envy you in your position and have plans to usher you out and overthrow you. I mean, we can find examples of this all across time and all across business. Such as Steve Jobs getting forced out of his company after a long power struggle against him, which he then was eventually brought back by the same people that got rid of him, which makes it a very interesting story that I might cover soon. And if you are interested in that, let me know in the comment box. But the point I'm making is, as an entrepreneur, and even in life in general, you need to be prepared for conflicts and war. On the surface, everyone may seem peaceful, but as we dig below the surface, it appears to be every man and woman for themselves. Our society will no doubt try to deny this and try to portray a more gentle and kinder picture of the world. But in reality, there is no doubt we all have battle scars, whether that's from business or from our personal lives. One of the biggest things I advocate and promote on this channel is the need for self-reliance. As the more self-reliant you are, then the more powerful and stronger you become, as less and less people can control you and their actions can no longer affect you, such as a boss firing you. And that's why I fell in love with entrepreneurship at such a young age age as it allows you to become way more self-reliant but even so with being self-reliant there is no doubt that we will always have to deal with conflict and face battles daily and when i first was introduced and started to study war i didn't really understand the real need of why i needed to study it i initially thought all these business books on war was all about just declaring war with people and crushing them by any means necessary. But in reality, as I got older, I realized that this concept was simply not the case. Just because you study war doesn't mean you're going to turn into the next Hitler or Napoleon. And as I realized growing up, the actual point of studying war, especially as an entrepreneur, is not to become an aggressive, arrogant prick about everything, but rather how to be more rational and strategic when it comes to conflict. 
learning to channel our aggressive impulses. Instead of denying and repressing them, the whole goal of studying war is to be that of a strategic warrior. The man or woman who manages difficult situations through strategic and intelligent maneuvers. Many psychologists and sociologists believe that it's only through conflict that problems are solved. So our successes and failures in life can be traced down to how well or how badly we deal with the inevitable conflicts that confront us in society. And us trying to avoid all conflicts or getting emotional and lashing out are both counterproductive in the long run. As these are not rational ways of thinking. The goal that you want to aim for is to become a strategic warrior. And it's all about operating to think about your long-term goals. Deciding what fights to avoid and which are inevitable. And knowing how to control and channel our emotions. When forced to fight, the strategic warrior does so with indirection and intelligent, subtle maneuvers, allowing themselves to stay clean while resolving the situation. The idea of fighting rationally and strategically comes to us from our human history with warfare, where the art of strategy was invented and refined. In the beginning, war was not strategic at all. Battles between tribes were fought in a very brutal manner. A kind of ritual of violence, which was essentially just a battle of the balls match on a battlefield. But as we began to expand and evolve into larger tribes and states, it became abundantly clear that war had way too many hidden costs. And that by waging war blindly and irrationally leads to exhaustion and self-destruction. Even if you did taste the glory of victory, what was the point of defeating your enemy if you lose everything else in the process? This revelation led us human beings to have to think a lot more rationally about war and for us to think about ways that allowed us to be a lot more strategic. The art of becoming more strategic allowed for much smaller armies to defeat much larger ones where the odds were highly stacked against them. Strategy in a sense was all about and still is commanding the entire war effort, deciding what formations to deploy and what maneuvers to use to gain an advantage. And as we became more strategic and more sophisticated towards our actions of war, so did our enemies, resulting in more strategies to be invented. And from then on now, the nuances of war became ever so complex. Now, one of the greatest books I have ever read on war, and probably one of the most important, is The Art of War by Sun Tzu, the ancient Chinese general and military strategist, who defined the goal of war by winning the war with at least amount of bloodshed possible. And how he suggested to do this is by playing on the psychological weaknesses of your opponent. By inducing feelings of frustration and confusion, a great strategist can get the other side to break down mentally before surrendering physically. In this way, this is the art of war and victory can be won at a much lower cost. And this is a key concept that we need to take away. Nowadays, it is highly unlikely that we are going to engage in a physical warfare against our enemies. I mean, on an actual battlefield with tanks and planes. But what is most likely going to take place, especially in business, is psychological warfare. And this type of warfare is what we will most likely engage in with our enemies. And this is what we can take from the great Sun Tzu. Your goal of war is by winning the war with the least amount of bloodshed and destruction to yourself as possible. And this strategic idea of being supremely rational and emotionally balanced and striving to win with at least loss of resources as possible can be applied to so much of our day-to-day -day lives. Now, by no means am I advocating for war, nor am I saying it's a good thing, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat it either. War is something that is ingrained into our society and into our bloody history as humans. And conflicts between humans are always going to be 
inevitable. And this is an idea that we just have to accept. There is a quite famous Japanese saying that goes along the lines of, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in war. Meaning there is no harm at all with being prepared and learning how to deal with conflicts and how to attack and defend yourself. Even if you don't use it, it is more advantageous to be prepared. As again, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in war. Whenever you cast and set any type of goal for yourself, you are in essence participating in strategy. If you want or desire anything, you must be ready and be able to fight for it. Mastering the art of warfare, ironically, will only make your life that much peaceful. For you are confident that you can play the game and win without violence. Again, referring back to being that warrior in the garden. Because you never know when someone might come to your garden and challenge you to a duel. So it's essential that you are ready and confident to deal with it. And that again is one of the biggest reasons why I do character breakdowns on the channel. Based on the strategies of war and power. Because with each video and all the concepts we learn from different characters, we are in essence becoming that more of a strategic warrior. And building our confidence to be able to deal with the inevitable conflicts in our lives. Whether that's in business or in our personal lives. Now, you can find many different strategies through the character breakdowns that I do. However, I will arm you with some very essential ideas now that you should aim for in transforming yourself into a strategic warrior in your daily life. The first idea is, is to look at things as they are and not as your emotions color them. In strategic thinking, you must see your emotional responses to events as a kind of disease and it must be remedied. Emotions such as fear will make you overestimate your enemy and make you act too defensively. Anger and impatience will draw you into rash actions that will cut off your options. Overconfidence, particularly as a result of success, will make you go too far. The only remedy to this disease is to simply be aware that the pull of emotion is inevitable. And when you feel these types of emotions during conflict, notice it and compensate for it. Meaning, when you have a success, become extra wary. When you're angry, take no action. When you're fearful, your mind is going to exaggerate the fears that you face. War demands that utmost in realism. The ability to see things as they are. The more you can limit or compensate for your emotional responses, the closer you will come to becoming the ultimate strategic warrior. Now, the second ideal that we can use to become the ultimate strategic warrior is to depend on our own arms. In the search for success in life, people tend to rely on things that seem simple and easy or things that have worked before. This could mean accumulating wealth, resources, a large number of allies or the latest technology and the advancement it brings. This way of thinking is just all about being materialistic and mechanical. But true strategy, as we said before, is psychological, a matter of intelligence, not material and resources. Everything in life can be taken away from you, and it generally will do at some point. Your wealth and resources vanish, all the latest gadgets that you have suddenly become old, or your so-called allies desert you. But if your mind is armed with the art of war, then there is no power that can take that away. In the middle of a crisis, your mind will find its way to the right solution by having superior strategies at your fingertips. This will give your maneuvers irresistible force. As the great military strategist Sun Tzu says, being unconquerable lies within yourself. And the final idea I will touch on to becoming the ultimate strategic warrior is to spiritualize your warfare. Every day you face battles. That is the reality of creatures in their struggle to survive. But the greatest battle of all 
is within yourself. Things such as your weaknesses, your emotions and your lack of resolution in seeing things through to the end. What you must do is declare unceasing war on yourself. As a warrior in life, you welcome combat and conflicts as a way to prove yourself, to better your skills and to gain courage, confidence and experience. Instead of repressing your doubts and fears, you face them down and you go to battle with them. The strategic warrior wants challenges and invites more war and by doing this you are forging the warrior spirit and you become one step closer to becoming the ultimate strategic warrior. And that's what a lot of my channel is dedicated to. The Golden Knowledge channel is dedicated to arm you with practical knowledge that will give you endless options and advantages in dealing with the elusive warriors that attack you in daily battle. And we do this in the form of breaking down your favourite TV show or movie characters to help us put the strategies into context. Events in our lives mean nothing if we do not look back and reflect on them in a deep way. And ideas from books are pointless if they have no practical application to life. That's why the channel aims to teach these strategies in the most engaging, practical and entertaining way possible. In strategy, all of life is playing a game. The game is exciting, but it requires deep and serious attention. What you must know must translate into action, and action must translate into knowledge. In this way, strategy becomes a long life challenge and the source of constant pleasure, and it allows you to conquer all the difficulties, all the conflicts, and whatever life will inevitably throw at you. And that's what I'm here to help you with. Welcome to the Golden Knowledge. Now, if you are interested in learning practical strategies that can help you become a strategic warrior, then make sure you check out the character breakdowns on the channel. And if you are wanting me to break down your favorite character, then make sure you leave a like and comment below who you want to see. And if you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. And to all our loyal subscribers, we are glad you are here. We do some of the best breakdowns on YouTube and we aim to produce at least one high quality animated video per week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any golden knowledge. I'll see you soon.